58 and a manual. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this 2021 Ford Mustang GT convertible with a six speed manual transmission. Huge shout out and thank you to Randy Marion Ford for providing this Mustang for today's video. Definitely check out their website, links down in the description below. And the model that we're looking at today is finished off in grabber yellow and has an MSRP at $46,900. Underneath the hood, the Mustang GT utilizes a five liter naturally aspirated eight cylinder engine. This V8 pumps out 460 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque. It's paired to a six speed manual transmission and sends the power to the rear wheels through a limited slip rear differential. With a curb weight around 3,800 pounds and running on a 16 gallon fuel tank, you can expect 15 miles per gallon in the city with 24 out on the highway. This muscle car can even achieve zero to 60 in less than four and a half seconds with a quarter mile time around 12.2 seconds. And then top speed is around 155 miles per hour. The overall length is 188.5 inches with a wheelbase at 107.1. Height is 54.3 and width is 75.4 inches. And the Mustang GT also utilizes four piston brake calipers up front with 14 inch rotors and 13 inch rotors in the back with single piston calipers. Taking a look at the exterior styling now with the Mustang GT convertible. It has a really aggressive set of headlights and I love how we even get the LED daytime running lights towards the center. If I hit the lock button on the key, you see how they'll shut off but they look really cool when they're on. We get LED headlights as well and a really cool blacked out housing. And then the turn signal is down below with another LED for a fog light. There's a lot of sharp lines in the front end of a Mustang to give it a really sharp design. And I love how you can see the black protruding forward for this front splitter. It really helps give it that muscular design we all know and love. The lower portion has an opening for the grill to allow more cooling to the radiators. It's finished off in a satin black plastic that matches that front splitter. And then we get a gloss black piece for the main grill with the Pony logo right in the center finished off in chrome. Ford does a really good job designing the front end of these Mustang GTs and I love how bold all the sharp lines come together. The hood even has some really sharp lines that fade their way all the way towards the windshield and I really love the massive heat extraction vents towards the center. They have a really angular design and all the sharp lines really flow together to give this that muscular front end appearance. And then moving to the side profile, we get a set of 18 inch wheels finished off in a two-tone gloss black machine silver. They're a split five spoke design and they look pretty nice against this bright yellow color. There are much nicer wheels available on the Mustang GTs that really add to the aggression though. You also get your 5.0 badge on this front fender and a really sharp line going all the way through the door panel. It cuts through the door handle itself. Then there's another matching line in the lower portion of the door and a side skirt that matches that front splitter. I love the sharp lines for the side profile of the Mustang and you can even see this really sharp one above the rear tires to give it that wider appearance in back and then another matching line in the farthest portion. The door handles and mirror caps are all finished in body color, as is the frame around the windshield. Has a really cool look with the top down, and it definitely has a nice classic design. With the top down, you can even see a nice sneak peek at the premium interior for this car, and then with the soft top folded up, it folds right behind these rear seats. Moving to the rear end, you can see an antenna in the center and on the right side, and we also get a body color trunk mounted spoiler. There's a third brake light back here. Then GT is written out right in the center in a chrome design. There's gloss black all throughout the center. And then the Mustang's traditional three bar LED taillights. If I tap one of the buttons on the key, you can see them light up. They have kind of a C shape to them and they are very three dimensional. They go really deep inside this area and they look super cool. If I go ahead and lock it, you can see them shut off. And of course we also get the sequential turn signal. Down below, we have more parking sensors and then black for the diffuser. Reverse light is in the center. There's some sharp fins back here and then finishing it up with the dual exhaust. To take a look at the trunk space, you have a button on the key fob you can double tap and you can also press the button underneath the GT logo within the bumper. So I like how you have that. There's a button on the inside as well. 
Back here, we have a pretty good amount of space in here. The convertible is not gonna be quite as practical as the coupe, but nonetheless, you could probably fit two or three pieces of luggage back here. The convertible top does not take up any room in the trunk. It's actually sitting above in this area right there. But needless to say, still is a pretty roomy car. So then if I just grab it and close it up, closes it down, and then keeping the key fob in my pocket if the car is locked, you just grab the door handle, it automatically unlocks, and we can move to the interior. So this is a GT Premium with really nice black leather covering everything. You're also gonna see silver accents and white stitching. If we move to the door panel now, finished off in black, you get contrast stitching and then some padding. We even get an aluminum color for your grab handle as well as the release handle. Lock and unlock all three window controls. This larger one operates both of the rear ones together. Then we have mirror controls up front and a little bit of storage. We have Mustang on the door sill and this is illuminated, which looks really nice. Then we have some power controls up front on the seat with a manual recline and then really nice black leather for everything. Really large bolsters for even being just the normal seats, but being covered in leather, they look really good. You can see the perforated leather in the center with perforated going up all the way through and then the stitching around the headrest and spinning around to a black leather steering wheel with silver accents. And then now inside the GT, keep my foot on the clutch, we can go ahead and fire it up. Taking a look at the gauge cluster now, we have your analog speedometer over on the right with your fuel level, and then your tack over on the left with engine temperature. This also gets a small LCD screen right in the center, and you can control that using the buttons over on the right side of the steering wheel. So if we take a look in here in this main menu, I can scroll up to the gauge mode and see a few different items. If I scroll up and down, you can see a lot of different things that will come up. Going back, we also have your trip and fuel information that'll come up. And then we also have some track caps as well. Accelerometer, acceleration timer, and brake performance. Lap timer, launch control, things like that. Driver's assistance and settings will also come up. So really cool to see what you get in the Mustang. Over on the left side of the steering wheel, we have all of your volume controls. Cruise control settings in the lower portion. You get the aluminum Mustang logo in the center. Controls on the right, more of the audio controls. And then on the left side of the steering wheel, we have your stock for your turn signal, as well as the lane keeping assist. Then we have windshield wipers over to the right. On the left side of the steering wheel itself, we have your trunk button, then an area right here for a little bit extra storage. We have your headlight controls on the left with all the different controls, and then we have a cool looking aluminum colored accent. There's black leather-like trim going across this entire dashboard, and I really like how you get the double bubble, which is kind of classic for Mustang. On the far right, you can see Mustang logo on the right, and a better look at this aluminum looking color. It is plastic, but it has like a brush look to it, pretty sporty looking. We also have your air vents right in the center that have a lot of cool different movements. And then the SYNC 3 system right down below. We have all your climate controls right now. You can easily adjust how everything works, turning it on and off, dual zone climate control. We have audio that can come up with all of the different settings, phone integration, and we also have a few different apps. And then for the settings, you can see everything that comes up. If I go ahead and take the transmission, put it into reverse, your standard backup camera is gonna pop up with all of your parking sensors over on the right side, and you can even turn the parking aid on and off. Then going back into neutral. Underneath the screen, we have some shortcuts for all the radio controls, volume on the left, tuning on the right, then the basic controls in the center. Then we get all the climate controls. We have heated and ventilated seats, which is really easy to toggle, and then a toggle right here for your different temperature. It comes up on the screen as well. You can turn that on and off, fan speed, air conditioning, all the different zones and everything. Then we have your engine start stop button and these really nice toggle switches. You can do that one up for your hazards. We also have traction control that comes up. It'll turn on and off. And then over here, we have your two different drive modes. We have a steering wheel control to go into normal, sport, as well as a comfort mode. Then we have your actual drive modes. Toggling this one up, we have a normal sport, track, drag racing, and then a wet mode. So really nice to have that. There's some storage up front with a USB and 12 volt. 
And then we get the aluminum color along the shifter. Really nice design with all the black leather. I love the way everything looks. We have a manual e-brake. You have two cup holders on the right with more of that aluminum color. And then some black leather and stitching. We have a little bit of space in here with some USBs and a 12 volt. And then your glove box to the right side. You just press this button and it opens up and we have a pretty normal bucket in there. One last look at the convertible. Very nice looking for a Mustang GT. The premium definitely gives you a great looking interior. And then as far as the convertible top, we have a button on the top here with all of your dome lights. If I just press this forward, you can see the top is gonna come up. The windows go down first and then the soft top is gonna automatically go up. You see how quick and easy it is. And then it will latch up front here and complete the process. And then you just grab this handle and pull it down, twist it to the left and you can lock it closed. The Mustang does have back seats and with the top up, you can get a good look of how it looks comparing it to the coupe. Not quite as much of a sloping back like you get in the Fastback. So from there, you can grab the backside of these front seats and get this seat up out of the way. And if you need a little bit extra space, you could always automatically push it. But from here, you can see the two bucket seats in back that have really large bolsters, the same black leather with perforated leather in the center, and then all the white stitching. And then sitting back in the Mustang convertible, this actually has a lot more headroom than in the coupe. Even if I put the seat back, I still do get some knee room. I have the seat set at my height, 5'11", but this is actually much nicer. And if I put the top down, of course, I have endless headroom. So if you're actually gonna use the back seats, the convertible might be the way to go, not too bad. All right, guys, so we are setting off now in the Mustang GT convertible. I've driven a ton of Mustangs, but never the convertible. So first off, the manual transmission in V8 is the way to go. You know, the EcoBoost is great, you know, the 10 speed's great. But if you want the fun factor out of a Mustang, get a manual, get a V8. That is just the best, I think. Top down, we're gonna take it down in just a second. But getting my bearings with this car as a normal car, this really is a car you could daily. The trunk is decently sized, even with the convertible top. And it's just comfortable to sit in here. Armrests are in a great place. The seats have a lot of padding. It's really comfortable to be in here. Visibility is pretty good. The C pillar is kind of large, being the soft top. But honestly, with your mirrors adjusted correctly and everything, I don't really see any issues with that. So nice car overall, and I was really surprised that the back seats are more roomy than in the coupe. That is a pretty sweet touch. I'm not sure if I can do the top while driving. Let's go ahead to reduce speed, it says. Uh, press the button. So, no you cannot, so I'm gonna have to stop for a second. Uh, unfortunately, I guess you can't do that while driving. Kinda come all the way to a stop, it looks like. And now we can put the top down and feel it out a little bit. And you do have to hold the button. If you stop holding the button, it comes back up. But from there, I'll keep all the windows up just so I can have a little bit better audio. But that's top down now. I'd say that it definitely is a downfall having to put the, uh, or having to stop the car. But nonetheless, top down in a Mustang, pretty much never done that before. We'll hear out the V8 a little bit more than what we've been hearing. But already, I love the open top experience and the fact that this has the V8, it sounds so good. So we'll go ahead and go into the track mode. This one doesn't seem to have the active exhaust or anything like that. It's more of a basic GT with just a luxury premium package in it. But let's get up to some speed a little bit. Let's see what it's like. <laughs> it's not that fast of a car to be quite honest. It's a peppy vehicle. I mean, it gets up to speed. The launch is pretty impressive. But, you know, from just like half throttling and stuff like that, you know, that's, you know, giving it some gas. It doesn't really throw you back in your seat, especially at a lower RPM, but it's a really usable power band. And it does scoot really well. I mean, from 40 to 60, you're gonna get there without thinking. The steering is pretty tight in this mode too. And then while well, it has these standard brakes, they still do a great job getting this thing down to speed. It's got some weight to it. And then as far as slow speed maneuverability, being rear wheel drive, you know, you can really crank the steering wheel pretty sharp. And wow, that's actually a pretty tight turning circle. Oh, fill out the little S turns once again. 
Top down is awesome. Honestly, convertibles, they have a lot of fun. <laughs> so if you get a little bit more on it in first and second gear, that's where it feels a little bit quicker, you know? If you're kind of bogging the engine, it's not that fast, but if you hit the sweet spot first and second gear, this thing does rip pretty well. <laughs> oh, and I love the sound of it. I wish this had the active exhaust, so that would really wake it up. And the uh, suspension in this is just the fixed suspension, really comfortable too. You know, you can get more performance oriented trim levels to get more performance out of it. But uh, nice car. And with the top down like this, I have the heated seat on, which I can feel a little bit, you know, my back and butt are still nice and toasty. And then I have the heat on, so we have some hot air flowing. So it's a car, it's, it's usable in the winter time, you know, if you're buying the convertible, depending on where you're living, you want to probably have it with the top down quite a lot. But being in this now, this is a pretty enjoyable experience. Not too much wind and uh, you know, just kind of touches your head a little bit. <laughs> that Coyote motor is amazing. It's such a smooth power delivery. And with this transmission, so it's not the Tremec that you'll get in like the Boss or something, or the Mach 1, but I like how it really does feel nice and solid. There are some complaints, you know, not everyone likes this transmission as far as just how robust it is or isn't, but from what I've experienced with them, it's a really good short shifter, really notchy. You have a pretty lightweight clutch, however, there is good feedback. So it's pretty nice, you know, it's a nice blend, and the price point, honestly, not too bad. So I think that is then it for the 2021 Mustang GT Premium Convertible top-down experience because we got to do it in the convertible car. Uh, I'll leave it off for the whole day. Might as well being a Mustang, but definitely a nice car overall. If you guys enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and check out Randy Marion Ford for your next Ford. I'll have their website linked down below. But yeah, thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Baby, baby.